Hi, this is Dr. Geneva, and welcome to another awesome episode of Ignite to Impact. Today, we're talking with Robert T. Youngblood, better known as YB, and he is the LinkedIn locksmith. So come join us as he and I talk about the power of LinkedIn, how in fact you can use it to take your business to the next level. If you're interested in generating more revenue or getting more networking and connections, he and I talk about how to unleash the power of LinkedIn. We also talk about my book, LinkedIn for Business Consultants, and it's an all around great conversation for entrepreneurs. Welcome to Ignite to Impact, a weekly podcast about next generation leadership and what it takes to make a difference at work, with family, and in your community. Get ready to be inspired as we pull back the curtain and dive into intimate and energetic conversations with achievers and doers who are in the trenches navigating workplace politics and influencing change. Get ready to hear how leaders fail and get back up learning how to keep it together while traveling in their leadership journey. Our mission, to help you with leadership tips and strategies that you can use to get fast results and help make your business, community, and world a better place. Now, here's your host, Master Leadership Strategist, Dr. Geneva Williams. So, let's ignite to impact. Hi there, this is Dr. Geneva, and welcome once again to Ignite to Impact. Okay, so you know all the time, if you listen to any of my podcasts, you know I'm always talking about LinkedIn. And you know that I think it's an incredible resource. I encourage uh, all the people I coach and mentor and talk with to be on LinkedIn. And as many of you know, I also co-authored a book, LinkedIn for Business Consultants. Uh, Deborah Ferris was the key author. But if you go on my Amazon page, you will see uh, that book. So, you know, I'm a big LinkedIn fan. So what I decided to do, what I've got coming to you is a real LinkedIn expert. He does LinkedIn. In fact, he's called the LinkedIn locksmith, but he does so much more. So my guest today is Robert T. Youngblood, known as YB. He's the founder and chief connecting officer of YBC Connects uh, out of Richmond, Virginia. And it's a strategic relationship and referral marketing firm. He's a master connector, coach, and consultant. And he works to empower professional speakers, entrepreneurs, sales professionals, and students to really enhance their brand. And you know we're all interested in that because we want to be able to own a room. And in order to own that room, you got to understand your brand. Well, in many circles, he is known as the LinkedIn locksmith for his ability to help clients unlock that power of LinkedIn. And you know, I believe in that power. And so we're going to hear about him. Uh, We're going to talk with him about that and so many other things. So welcome, YB. Some blessings, Dr. Geneva. Thank you so much for the opportunity to be on your podcast. Oh, we're so delighted. So, okay. So I need to start off first with tell us about Robert T. YB Youngblood. Yes, ma'am. So I am a native of Bronx, New York. Shout out to all of the listeners who are from New York. Yes, and East Coasters, and I'm one of those. Love it, love it. Uh, uh, Native of Bronx, New York. I grew up in a single-parent home. My dad was actually murdered when I was two. And so Mm -hmm. I share that aspect of my my life because I recognize that in every adversity, there is a seed of an equal or greater benefit. And I'm thankful that uh, my mother saw fit to put me into various programs that helped me to develop my character uh, and my leadership skills because it it became necessary for me to have those uh, in terms of what I do today. Uh, I transitioned from Bronx, New York, and uh, went to Virginia Union University, Mm -hmm. one of the largest HBCUs. Yes. All of my HBCU alumni. Yes. And uh, went went to Virginia Union and gained some valuable life experiences 
Uh, I had a, a set minor setback, which uh, prompted me to have to leave school. Uh, but, but as I mentioned before, in every adversity, there's a seed of an equal or greater benefit because had it not been for that 18-month transition, I wouldn't be known as uh, YB, uh, the LinkedIn locksmith. And so uh got into sales, uh, started doing some work with direct sales, uh, got involved in uh, working with a couple of, um, of, of organizations, nonprofit organizations. And then in 2012, I was laid off from one of those positions. And as I was transitioning out of that position, I did the one thing that my mother taught me to do, and that was to pray. Mm. And so as I prayed, I asked God to deposit within me something that would allow me to live for him while utilizing the gifts and talents that he had given me to impact other people. And that's when he blessed me with YB Connects. Oh. And so as, as you mentioned, you know, YB Connects is is me. You know, I'm I'm the connector. I'm 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 the plug as some of our young younger folks would say, right? And so I I, I walk in my gift okay. of being a connector uh-huh. and being able to uh impact other people through the gifts that God has given me. Wow. So so Y B, what does a connector do? And and why is what you do important? That's a very great question. So a connector essentially is, uh, essentially identifies the gaps that people have. So okay. uh, let's talk in the realm of business. You can have the greatest product or service in the world, but if people don't know you exist, you can't get paid by those people. Mm-hmm. And so what a connector does is it increases the visibility, credibility, and profitability of those individuals that, that, that he works, he or she works with. And there's a ton of connectors out there. Uh, one of the, one of my favorite connectors, uh, uh, and you may know this gentleman very well, is Dr. George C. Frazier. Mm-hmm. And uh, Dr. George has taught me the yes. importance of helping people first. Figure out a way to help people first. And as you focus on helping other people, your opportunity to shine will come. And so as mm-hmm. a connector, I'm always looking to find the gaps that people have. Okay. And I may, I may or may not be able to help them, but I may know someone who, mm-hmm. can, who can help them, and I, fa- I facilitate that connection accordingly. Okay, so you look for the gaps, and then you try to fill them, and if you can't fill them yourself, you got this resource bank, and you will refer or help people make some kind of connection. That is correct. Okay, that's wonderful. Yes, and we all know and love Dr. George Frazier. In fact, he was one of my podcast guests, and I know he just uh, finished another phenomenal PNC conference. Were you there? I was there with oh. my first conference. I was blown away, and that's actually how I ended up on your on your podcast. That I must mean right that there. that's because you ran into that fabulous Pam Perry, right? Yes, (laughs) Yes, indeed. We love us some Pam Perry. Well, uh, YB, so, okay, so I think I heard in your um, telling us a little bit about yourself journey that you talked about some transition that really led to YB Connects. Yes, ma'am. Can you share that with us? I sure can. So, you know, I, you know, as many college students go their way to college, I was actually the first one in my immediate family to, to go to college. And my mother, my father, and all my grandparents went to college. And so I was the first one in my immediate family to go. And so, you know, when you go to college, especially at HBCU, where there's a lot of culture, there's a lot of distractions, I allowed myself to be distracted. I mm-hmm. started out uh, as a presidential scholar, received a full scholarship for college. And at the end of my second year, I had to give that full scholarship back. Mm-hmm. That was because uh, I was supposed to maintain a certain GPA. I did not maintain that GPA. I had a 3.275, and I needed a 3.3, and so I was set back. And so at the end of my fourth year, I was no closer to graduating than I got than when I got started. Mm-hmm. And so on December 7, 2000, I signed my name on a withdrawal line uh, to withdraw from school, which was the toughest thing that I, I had to do at that time. And when I transitioned back to New York, not knowing that with that adversity, uh, a seed of an equal greater benefit would come my way, I connected with a fraternity brother who opened me up to a business opportunity, which literally changed my perspective. It enhanced mm. my thought process, and it helped me to 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 see life from a different perspective. Mm-hmm. So much so that when I returned back to college in 2002, I changed my language, and everywhere I went, I was mm. saying peace and blessings, peace and blessings, mm. peace and blessings. So much so that the people that, that had met me for the very first time 
whenever the, anybody would ask about me, they would say, oh, who's that, the, uh, the, the Peace and Blessings guy? I was known as the Peace and Blessings uh -huh. guy. I said peace and blessings so much. So that 18-month transition from, you know, uh, experiencing 9-11 to, you know, having to pitch products on the street to, you know, moving and transition to three different locations in 18 months was the best thing that could have happened to me in that time because it, it pulled out of me the winner that, uh, that, that I am today. I mean, I had to go through that trial and that tribulation to be able to empower inspire and impact other people to help them overcome their their challenges as well so i'm thankful for that particular transition because if it had it not been for that uh, it would be very difficult for me to relate to people today and help them through their challenges and through their struggles mm -hmm. yeah those tests are so important because they prepare us for for life and and really you know we can't have those successes without those failures um you know, um, so why be? So tell us, uh, um, how did you become the LinkedIn locksmith? That's a phenomenal question. So another, you know, and as I mentioned, as I started out with adversity, I, I was going through a, a, a trial at the end of 2015. I was working for a major organization called Inroads, which I had gone through uh, their leadership development program as a college student. And 15 years later, I got a shot to work for the organization. Uh, and Inroads is a nonprofit organization that works with underserved students to prepare them for corporate and community leadership. Uh -huh. And so in doing that time, um, the call on, of entrepreneurship kept pulling at me real strong. And I okay. felt like I wasn't really living up to the potential that God had given me. And one night I was just so uh, distressed that I decided that I wanted to take myself out of here. I, I was ready to go. I was ready to give, you know, just take my own life. And, uh, and, and I didn't. Uh, because of two brothers who blessed me. They, they came and they helped me think straight, and I got counseling. But then I went on YouTube, and I found a, a, an amazing speaker by the name of Dr. Eric Thomas, E.T. the Hip Hop Preacher. And I listened to his message, and I got excited, and I became a part of his community, Breathe University. And, uh, and as I started walking in my gift, I was invited onto one of their mastermind calls, and there was a gentleman who was speaking who was talking about the power of a locksmith, how important it was for you to be able to connect with a locksmith or to be a locksmith. And so because I volunteered on that call, he used me as an example. He mentioned how uh, uh, during a one-hour session with me, I was able to unlock the power of LinkedIn, and he called me right on that call, mm. the LinkedIn locksmith. Mm -hmm. and so from that, from that particular call, you know, I'm a I'm a marketing guy, so I took that name and I just began to run <laughs> yes. with it, and run with it, uh -huh. and now you know, and now everyone uh, knows me as the LinkedIn locksmith. Okay, so 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 what does a LinkedIn locksmith do? That's a phenomenal question. So I essentially help make uh, LinkedIn simple for those who see it as a hard a hard task. Uh, LinkedIn uh, was established for initially for job seekers to connect with recruiters. And a lot of people are on LinkedIn because they feel like, well, I'll use it to get a job. But it's so much more valuable than that. It's a tremendous revenue-generating tool. It's, just, it's a tremendous relationship-building tool. And so what I do as a LinkedIn locksmith is I focus on uh, coaching and, and consulting okay. small business owners, mm -hmm. uh, entrepreneurs, sales professionals, and professional speakers on how to leverage LinkedIn mm. to increase their visibility, credibility, and profitability. Okay. Okay. And you know, it's it's just, I, I'm just so fascinated by that because I can't tell you how many people that I've, I was just talking to some folk and um, telling them I was going to talk to you and, you know, unlocking LinkedIn, telling them about my book. And, and they were saying, yeah, you know, I do need to get on, do that LinkedIn thing, or I do need to, and I'm always running <laughs> across people who are saying that, you know, like, well, I've got my my picture up there but I really don't use it or well I don't need a job now so I'm not using it and so to have to know that there's a coach someone who can unlock the power of LinkedIn which I believe is very powerful that's that's really great so what what YB what one two 
tips. Now, let's do this. If you ran into one of these people that I say that I run into quite frequently who is not convinced, who doesn't believe in the power of LinkedIn, what would you say to them to convince them to use LinkedIn? Yeah, that, that, that's, I, I get that all the time. So okay. the very first question I would ask them is, are you satisfied with where your business is today? Mm, okay. So if they are, if they are a, an entrepreneur, if they are a sales professional, the number one question I would ask them is, are you satisfied with where your business is today? Because mm-hmm. if you are, then you really don't need LinkedIn. Okay. You know, if you, if you have a multi-billion dollar entity, which which many multi-billionaires are on LinkedIn, right? So I wouldn't know why a person would not want to use it. But but if they felt like they were comfortable, then I would say then you're fine. You don't you don't need LinkedIn. But mm-hmm. if you're not satisfied, if you're not if your revenue is not where it needs to be, if mm-hmm. your network is not where it needs to be, then the number one thing you need to do is to be on LinkedIn. And the reason why is because there's over 500 million professionals around. The, around 200 countries who are who are have a profile on LinkedIn. Now, LinkedIn uh, has essentially shared that only a third of those people are active on LinkedIn. So that's about 200 million people, right? Mm-hmm. Now, 200 million people is a lot of people, right? So mm-hmm. obviously, obviously, you know that that. Is, but if you got discovered by at least 5,000 people. That's enough to help you to become a multi multi millionaire mm-hmm. if you if you if you connected the right way. So the first question I would ask them is, are you satisfied with where you are in your business? And if they said no, the second thing I would say is, do you have a strategy to help you get connected to your ideal client? Mm-hmm. Because okay. a lot of us, a lot of us, before I even got, before I was able to gain clarity, I was all over the place. I was, I was, I was doing 50 million things. I was saying 50 million things and people were confused and people don't buy confusion. They buy clarity. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so okay. then, then they would say, well, why should I work with you? And I would say, well, number one, are you confused or do you have clarity? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because if you have confusion, then I can help you gain more clarity. Mm-hmm. Not only can I help you gain more clarity, but I can increase your visibility. I can increase your, your credibility, and I can enhance your confidence. And the confidence is the most important factor that's necessary to be successful, not only on, not only on LinkedIn, but in any business venture. And so mm-hmm. as a coach, I focus on helping my clients increase their confidence so they can take the necessary steps to be visible Credible, clear, and 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 uh, c- connected. Mm-hmm. And so you obviously believe that uh, LinkedIn can, in fact, be a, a a power resource for anyone who wants to take you know, is not satisfied with where they are now in their business, wants to take it to the next level, wants to increase their revenue, connections, networking, you think LinkedIn is a good answer? Oh, most definitely. Now, nothing against any other social media platforms. I know people making money on Instagram. I know people making money on Facebook. I know people making money on Twitter. Uh, however, uh, if your goal is to get in front of a decision maker of a company, if you want to get connected to the vice president of sales for the major company in your corporation, it's, it's probably not likely that that person is going to rock with you or connect with you on Instagram. Maybe the person mm-hmm. who's running that company's social media platform is on there, mm-hmm. but the director of sales or the director of student affairs or a college, if your goal is to speak on a college campus, mm-hmm. is, 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 what, is more likely that you'll be able to get their attention on LinkedIn mm-hmm. than it is if you try to do it on any other social media platform. Mm-hmm. So I believe that we have an advantage with LinkedIn. Uh, LinkedIn is literally a, a, a best kept secret and while it may not be at a billion like Instagram or, 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 or Facebook, uh, it does have the potential to get you in front of the people that you want to work with so that you can add value to them and they can add value to you. Mm-hmm. That is that is so phenomenal. Good, good, great advice. And you know, one of the things that I, that I say to people, if nothing else, put up a photo you know, I see so many of these blank, you know, people who will uh, ask to connect to me, and but there's no photo. I mean, there's not a photo. And so I don't know how you feel about that, YB, but I'm very hesitant to add someone to my network if I don't even have a photo. 
No, I, I, I agree completely. So your photo is literally your calling card. You know, it's, it's the opportunity for you to establish credibility. Uh, now, there are some people who are skeptical about that. You know, in the age of, uh, you know, uh, discrimination and racism, people are scared. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. why, why would I put my picture up when somebody can automatically discriminate against me and not give me an opportunity? And I say, well, that's a valid argument. However, if you operate in excellence and what you do is, is, is solid, you will attract the right people who won't give a rip what you look like. Absolutely. If you can help them, if you can help them get results, right, and, you're, and you have uh, credibility, uh, people, will, people will seek you out, right? They, they, will, they will look for you. You won't have to make a, another cold call if your LinkedIn profile is properly uh, magnetized, right? Mm-hmm. Now, I focus on helping people to magnetize uh-huh. their profile. Uh-huh, okay. Which means that you begin to attract the right people to you. Now, you, you may end up attracting everybody to you. Mm-hmm. But then the second thing that we do is we focus on creating a vetting system, right? Mm-hmm. That doesn't mean you have to connect with everybody that it connects with you, but you want to connect with the people that you see is interested in establishing a mutually beneficial Relationship. It's not that I'm here to sell you and you. I'm getting you to buy. It's that I want to help you, but in the process of helping you, I'm going to uh, get helped as well. And so, yeah, having a photo is critical to your brand success. Imagine having a billboard and you, you took out the space and all you have is your phone number, but it's so small, nobody can see it. They can't see your face. They don't, there's no picture attached to it. And most people don't realize this, but a picture is worth a thousand words. And so your profile picture is the way for you to get the first impression out there. Mm -hmm. And I was taught that you never get a second chance to make a first impression. And so if you've got a powerful uh, professional headshot on your profile, that will literally draw people in to read more about you, and then they can learn more about what you have to offer and how you can add value to that. Terrific. Well, if you're just joining us, I have the distinct pleasure and delight to be talking to Robert T. Youngblood, known as YB, who's the founder and chief connecting officer. Hear that, folks, connecting officer, the chief connecting officer of YB Connects, LLC. And he's known in many circles as the LinkedIn locksmith. He's an expert in strategic relationships and referral marketing. His business is about that. And he's helped hundreds of professionals to level up on LinkedIn. And so he's been sharing us with us some tips and techniques. So, so uh, YB, who, who do you work with? Who, who's your target audience? So my target audience, are, so I, I'll, keep it gen, I'll keep it general and then I'll break it down. So mm-hmm. individuals who are looking to generate revenue. Mm. Okay. okay. And, so, and, so, and, so, and so there are people who just want a job. They want to, or they're looking for a school, or they're looking for a mentor. I can work with those people, but that's not my target. I specifically want to work with HBCU alumni who are entrepreneurs, small business owners, sales professionals, or professional speakers. Mm. These individuals have a need to do to generate more revenue. Okay. Uh, and, and, and in order for you to generate revenue, there's an actual equation that, that I teach my clients, right? So to generate revenue, you must first have a product or service, mm-hmm. first and foremost, right? And then you must connect your product or service to a consumer who wants to exchange their dollars for your product or service. And so I want to work with entrepreneurs and sales professionals and professional speakers because I know for a fact that their focus is on how do I generate more revenue? And the more revenue I can generate, the more profit I can potentially create for my business. Mm -hmm. And so those who are are, are, are graduates or attendees of HBCUs, I have a, I have a, a, a sincere desire to empower those people. As a matter of fact, had it not been for me attending the Power Networking Conference, I I wouldn't have uh, established uh, that particular target. And and I want to give a a shout-out to Dr. George Frazier and his wisdom for putting this together. I even want to give a shout-out to Trevor Ott because I had an opportunity to sit in uh, Trevor Ott's session and he talked about his four M's Right, yes. when you talk about having, you know, having a a, a movement and then mm-hmm. having a message and then having a methodology, and then from that that'll generate money, and that's 
shifted my mindset mm-hmm. to understand that I can't go out and try to help everybody. I've got a, there's, there's a There's a tribe that's going to be that's looking for a leader. And so for me, because I'm a graduate of uh, Virginia Union University and HBCU, I feel like I feel compelled to be able to relate to others who are not only HBCU alumni, but they're also entrepreneurs, professional speakers, sales professionals, or small business owners. I love it. And yes, Trevor Otts has been on our podcast as well. So we love him. We love Dr. George Frazier. And so you just traveling with all the big dogs and the folk who really know how to make things happen. I love it. So, you know, so this mission this focus now that you have on HBCU alumni and HBCU graduates who want to be uh, who want to create that wealth um, it, this is a beautiful thing so this really comes from if you look back into your experiences you have this burning desire this purpose to uh, work with this particular target audience that is correct. Uh, yeah. I, actually, I, actually, I actually took this on because there was a time where I had the desire to be the president of my alma mater. I had mm. the desire to be president of Virginia Union University, okay. all because of my influence of one uh, of our past presidents, Dr. Bernard Franklin. But as uh-huh. I began to build my business and, and, and began to connect with other uh, entrepreneurs, I, I shifted my gear uh, from wanting to be president of the institution to wanting to be extremely wealthy so I can write checks to the institute. Okay. Okay. And so and then you're so you're about helping others be the same. That is that is absolutely correct. Okay. That is absolutely correct. That's All absolutely right. Correct. Love it. So so now um so so the way you work with your target audience, your speakers, your sales professionals, your students, your entrepreneurs, uh, especially those coming from HBCUs, uh, is through LinkedIn or your coaching. Tell us, so so let's say I come to you and uh, want you to coach me. What, what happens? I know LinkedIn plays a big part in it. Tell, tell us a little bit about what happens. And I understand you also have some LinkedIn webinars and tours. So tell us about all of that good stuff. Uh, absolutely. So my process is I always begin with a 15-minute consult. Okay. Uh, I, I believe the first thing that I did uh, Dr. Geneva, is I, I, when I first got started full-time in my business, I, the first thing I did was I put a dollar value on my time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because a lot of times, you know, when we work, you know, a lot of times we work time for money, uh, we, we may not realize that if we don't put a dollar value to our time, we'll spend a lot of time with the wrong people and not generate any revenue. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. what I decided was okay. that I was going to invest 15 minutes in anyone who had an interest in learning about LinkedIn or even establishing a stronger relationship. Mm-hmm. And within that 15 minutes, I'm going to learn as much as I can about that person, what their struggle is, what their challenge is, and share what my process is and discuss next steps. I see. That's an opportunity for us to be able to build a rapport. Mm-hmm. What I find is that if I can build rapport and identify your need and share with you what I do, the next step is on that individual to make a decision as to whether or not they want to move forward. Okay. And work with them, right. Mm-hmm. And so I, I offer uh, actually two distinct packages currently. I have a, a LinkedIn consulting package mm-hmm. where a person can uh, can be able to get four hours of my time. Mm-hmm. I teach them specifically uh, how to magnetize their profile how to uh, gain credibility, how to search for their ideal client, and then I give them the profitability code, right? There's a, there's a code that I, that I, that I leverage that will help people to never have to cold call again in Uh their lives. Okay. Okay. So that that comes in that four hour session. And Mm -hmm. then my coaching package is actually a 10 hour package where an individual will get 10 hours of my time. Uh, we, we not only go through the, the, the four parts that I mentioned in the consultation, but I go deeper with these individuals and I hold them accountable to the actions that they need to take to be successful, not only on LinkedIn, but in their business. In addition to that, I also will fly out to their city for a one-day meetup. 
mm-hmm. on my dime mm-hmm. to build a stronger relationship with them. Mm-hmm. I also give them access to an assessment called the four animal assessment, which allows them to understand how to develop their their communication skills so they know how to communicate with their team and how to communicate with their clients. And so these are things that I strive to do. And within that coaching package, I make a, I don't make a promise, but my goal is to help that client to attract 10 new clients within 90 days. Mm-hmm. That's my goal. Mm-hmm. And the reason why that's my goal is because I've been able to help other people do the same thing. And so if a person has an interest in, in working with me, the, the very first uh, start to that, is a 15-minute consult where we get to know each other, identify their specific needs, give them my process, and see if I'm a good fit for them based on what their needs are. Mm-hmm. So why be, as an entrepreneur, which you clearly are, and you're moving, grooving, taking those next-level steps, you probably learned some, some lessons so far uh, in terms of entrepreneurship. What, would, what can you share with us? The very first lesson is uh, be confident. Okay. Be confident. You, you, so oftentimes people are in business for themselves and they're in business by themselves. And they don't really have to be. And I, I've heard someone say, well, entrepreneurship is a lonely, a lonely walk. It doesn't have to be. Mm-hmm. So the first thing I would say after being confident is find you a coach. So mm-hmm. that was the most valuable thing that I did was I found me a coach. My current coach is a gentleman by the name of Kendall Ficklin, who is the founder of Grindation. Uh, he's helped me to, to develop okay. a framework of understanding mind, health, balance, and wealth, and just mm-hmm. being able to walk in that. So instead mm-hmm. of me chasing after money and being empty as an entrepreneur, I chase after a mindset mm-hmm. that then allows me to have a health set and then a balance set, then that leads to money. So that would be, be the third thing. Um, the fourth thing would be become a part of an accountability group, okay? Because if you're an entrepreneur, it's easy to be lazy. It's easy to let yourself off the hook. It's easy to say, oh, I'll do it tomorrow. But if you're part of an accountability group, your accountability group is going to hold you accountable to the things that you said that you're going to do. And then last thing I, I've learned is just to execute. Um, Eric Thomas, who's one of my coaches, he says that the, the two reasons why people fail in life is because they fail to plan and they fail to execute. Mm-hmm. Uh, he also taught me that execution is worship, that people will love what you say. You, you can be a great talker, but if you're not executing, they're not going to love you for too, for, for too long. Exactly. And so the last thing is just to execute on the things that you say you're going to do. Exactly. YB, you have given us such a powerful, powerful uh, resource, tips, strategies. I love it. Uh, We definitely, I want to stay connected. Um, I love the work you're doing with HBCUs and the people who graduate from them and having that as a target audience. Thank you also for your tips for entrepreneurs, the coach, find a coach, be confident, uh, the accountability, and of course, execute. Uh, So important. And thank you, too, for sharing, you know, the trials and tribulations you had and how you overcame them, how you overcame your life challenges to now your fabulous company, Chief Connecting Officer, and helping us unlock uh, LinkedIn. So why be you have such incredible. Incredible uh, opportunities for resources and going to the next level. How can people get in touch with you? Yes, ma'am. Very simple. www.yourlinkedinlocksmith.com www.yourlinkedinlocksmith.com That will lead you right to my uh, LinkedIn profile and uh, what I would love for your listeners to do is that if they have an interest in connecting with me, just make sure that they send a personalized note uh, letting letting me know that they heard me on your podcast and let them mention your name and the podcast and I'll be happy to connect with them and identify ways that I can add value to them. So that's www.yourlinkedinlocksmith.com Thank you so much. That's your LinkedIn locksmith.com. And don't forget to mention the Ignite to Impact podcast. I appreciate you. I appreciate the, the, the mission and, and the purpose of your podcast. Keep, 
the faith, keep doing what you're doing, and I look forward to being able to meet you in person soon and, and adding tremendously more value to you as you've added to me by allowing me to be on your podcast. Thank you so very much. Oh, appreciate you so much. And hey, yeah, let's do that. Let's get together. Maybe I can come on one of your uh, LinkedIn tour stops and uh, uh, bring my book, LinkedIn for Business Consultants, and uh, we can get together perhaps and do something together. I welcome the opportunity. All right. Well, thank you again, Robert T. Youngblood, known better as YB. Thank you for being on Ignite to Impact. You've been listening to Ignite to Impact with your host, Dr. Geneva Williams, an award-winning executive, facilitator, and master leadership strategist. Dr. Geneva is passionate about inspiring others to get their own leadership on and empowering the next generation with leadership tools and tips to help make the world a better place. Sign up to download Dr. Geneva's audiobook on leadership. Get the show notes, links, and other resources at drgenevaspeaks.com. That's drgenevaspeaks.com. Thanks for listening. Please share this podcast to those in your community via Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, or Google+, and leave us a five-star review in iTunes. When you do that, it helps others find the show better. Send your questions or comments to info at drgenevaspeaks.com and use the hashtag IgniteTheNumber2Impact.